What's the word, y'all? The 2021-2022 NBA season is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, the Golden State Warriors are getting their fourth championship in eight years. Fourth championship in eight years is crazy to even say aloud. Shout out to them, a real dynasty, if you ask me. Before we talk about that game in that series, I want to ask you, because I'm very curious about this, because me and the homies, you know, we watched these games together, and we were trying to figure out ourselves, if we were to rate this NBA season from 1 to 10, 10 being this is the greatest season I've ever experienced as a fan, versus 1 being like this season was trash, where would you put it? I'm not going to tell you what I think just yet, because I don't want to, to skew any of the votes, but let me know in the comment section, 1 through 10. So yeah, the season is wrapped up. This season, I had a couple goals going into this year uh, I wanted to upload on this channel more than any of the previous seasons and I think we did that and I wanted to have half a million subscribers over here we did that so I want to say thank you to y'all whether you subscribed yesterday or you've been around here for this journey for the last three seasons I appreciate you me saying it aloud make it seem like I'm about to go on a hiatus or a break but I'm not because the NBA draft is a couple nights away ladies and gentlemen so off-season stuff will get it ramped up but I actually got a series idea that I've been working on and I'm hopefully it's gonna be successful you know what I'm saying in this offseason either way let's talk about the Golden State Warriors winning their championship after I give my respect to the Boston Celtics, starting off 23 and 24 to even get to the finals is, is a crazy run in itself. I'm already knowing how this offseason is about to go um, as far as narratives go or as far as NBA opinions go. If you just look at last series and go through NBA Twitter and you, you go through talking head TV shows, a lot of people say, hey, hey Tatum is him. Tatum is the dude. We, I think he number, he top 10 in the NBA right now. And then we get to the NBA finals and he, was, he had a poor series by his standards. And I think I think because of that, um, it's it's completely flipped on his head from just one series where he was great. He had a couple games where he was elite, elite. And then we get to the NBA Finals, we never got a single Jason Tatum game. And I think that that's about to change the opinions and narratives about Jason Tatum because this is the biggest stage you can you can imagine to be on. And there's NBA players, people in history that never even get to this spot. So he got here and he didn't play well. Now I, I'm a firm believer of like he, he's only 24 years old. I know I know maybe a cop out is, but he's only 24 years old. And it, it is what it is. I'm not about to sit here after game six where his team just lost the finals and bashed the kid because he had a struggle of a series. I'm not going to do that, but I only speak for myself. I think it's going to happen. This is about to be a long offseason for Jason Tatum. Bro might not even hit social media. You feel me? I'm already seeing the... um. The different edits. The game just ended. They, Steph Curry just got his MVP award. So it is just ended. Um, I already seen the edits of like it's one where it says not him in the back and this is number zero and it's Jason Tatum. I'm seeing the pseudo Texas to Kobe stuff. Like I understand memes. I think it could go too far. Either way. Jason Tatum did not give them a good performance. I even saw Kevin O'Connor tweet that Jason Tatum like a number two in this series. And I can't even look, I can't even say uh, Kevin O'Connor is tripping. He did not seem like one. Jalen Brown for this series was one. But what I will say is there's a lot of things that are replicatable for the Boston Celtics. Now, getting to the NBA Finals is extremely, extremely hard. So I'm not I'm not going to be one of the dudes to be like, they're going to be back because I don't really know. But they do have pieces like Marcus Smart will be there. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, I'm assuming, are both going to be there. Robert Williams was great this entire series. He was amazing. And hopefully he could be healthy for a series. You know what I'm saying? So they have pieces. They'll be fine. But let's go to the other side. The team that actually won, Wardell Stephen Curry. There, there's, there's nothing left on his resume that he needs to do. You feel me? For the last couple seasons, it was, well, he ain't got a finals MVP, so he can't be with him in the boom. Even though in the first championship, I think we can, majority of us are going to agree he should have got that, that uh, finals MVP over Iggy. Whatever, he did it. And this year, in 2022, he went against the best defense in all of basketball. Even though in this series it didn't really look like it because of the way they guarded him, he went against the best defense in all of basketball and gave him hell for five out of six games. He had the one stinker. And the only thing that was stinky about it is he missed every three. His, his like, two-point shooting in game number five was, like, nine of 13 or something. So he didn't even have, like, a terrible game. And, and that was his, his dud of a game. You know, there's nothing else he needs to prove. And I'm so very curious to what's going to be, that's going to come up because, well, you know how it works. You can never be good enough in the eyes of a lot of people. Bro has won two MVPs, one of them being the first unanimous MVP in history. I know that's kind of skewed because, like, LeBron should have had at least one unanimous with that one writer gave it to Carmelo Anthony. There are a couple people in history that were undoubtedly the best player in their season that should have got unanimous, but Steph Curry was the first one to legitimately get it. And now he's got four championships and a finals MVP it's it that's wraps there's there's nothing else anybody can say negatively about Steph Curry's game at least in this moment somebody gonna make up something you already know either way um I listen I'm a I'm a sucker for tears man I'm I'm a 
I'm soft on the inside. You feel me? Uh, when when a team is on the brink of success or championship, and like when Steph Curry broke down, I almost broke down. I'm not even a fan. You feel me? Like, I like Steph Curry, obviously, but I'm not a Warriors fan. I wasn't rooting for them to win, but when he when he got all emotional, so did I. Even last year, when Giannis sat on the bench and he was getting emotional, I got emotional. When the Lakers were jumping on the sidelines after the bubble win, I got a, Listen, anybody that go out there and show emotion, I'm, I reflect that emotion. You feel me? I was happy for Steph. I was happy for Giannis, and I was happy for the Lakers in that moment. But man, oh man, oh man, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't see this coming. If you look at my um, previews of this NBA season, don't believe. And again, I'm a guy that admits when he's wrong. That's first of all, everybody should be like that. I don't. I shouldn't have to preface it to make it seem like I'm some some good dude because I admit when I'm wrong. That should be the standard. Um, but if you look at like my previews, the Warriors was so hard for me to predict. Now I'm seeing some screenshots of people having the Warriors being a sub 500 team. I think that was the athletic. Um, I wasn't going that far, but we did a, a episode of our podcast um, through the wire podcast. We just said hundred K. Thank y'all. Um, where we were trying to predict the NBA standings before the season started. And I don't think I had the Warriors being like a super, super good team. Cause I didn't really know what to expect from, from Clay Thompson. I didn't predict that Jordan Poole was going to go from a G League player to one of the better and more fun um, young players in all of basketball. So even I underestimated them. But as the series went on, a season went on, and I was seeing who their opponents were every single time, I said Warriors in six. God, God, it happened. Warriors in six. And a lot of the stuff that I said in my preview came to be true about um, the turnover battle being huge. I think the team that won the turnover battle won every single game this series. That was a thing. The Warriors, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the Boston Celtics going on these streaks where they cannot score the ball. That happened time in and time out. Even in this game, uh, they started off so very hot. The Warriors struggled out the gate. Then the Warriors went on this crazy run where the Celtics could not buy a basket. And then the Warriors went on their own little drought. And I'm like, Boston, this is y'all chance. And they slowly peaked back in. Oh, it got to eight points. It got to nine points. But they were never, ever, ever to get able to get all the way back into this game. So a lot of the stuff that we thought were going to happen, happened. And I think I said in my preview that we're going to get one, at least one bad Jason Tatum game. We didn't get one really good Jason Tatum game and I was surprised by that you know and obviously if your star player your all-nba first team player doesn't give you an all-nba first team type performance then you, your chances of winning the series is um is low I, I've seen people have this conversation about Steph Curry of him being a front runner where he only talks to the crowd or do his dances and shimmies or point to the ring um when his team is up you can have that opinion. I don't think that's really necessarily the case but one person you cannot have that opinion about is Draymond Green. Before the season started, Draymond Green told the world, we are winning the championship. When he was struggling early in this series, he told people on his podcast, you're going to get this podcast. <laughs> you're going to get this podcast, and we're still going to win. When CJ McCollum called him and told him, hey, I got the Celtics winning the series, he said, hey, I'm sending them home, and they're going to be ringless just like you. And he did his thing. The last two games, Draymond Green was phenomenal. And me and the guys watched this game together. You know we're always in the call is me, Mike, Derek, um, Terrence, Pierre, and Kyra. When Draymond Green hit his first three, we were like, it's raps. It's raps. That, that's, it's raps. You feel me? If Draymond Green is hitting threes, it's he hit another one. I'm like icing on the cake. Draymond Green had a possession where the Celtics had, were on a run, and Draymond Green hit a mid-range jump shot. It was raps. He ended up with uh, 12 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists. I mean, after everybody was talking trash, after his mom was even talking trash about him, two back-to-back masterclass in the Draymond Green fashion. If you didn't think he was in the Hall of Famer before, I mean, another championship cements him in that. I mean, he was a cha he was a Hall of Famer before this, but another championship cements him in that. And this big three, this core of Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Draymond Green get their fourth championship. And I tweeted, Draymond was right, and I, I left it up to interpretation. Some people saw it as me talking about him predicting they were going to win his finals beforehand. Some people saw it um, when we when I thought I was talking about when he was talking to CJ. I was talking about all of that, including the mix-up of Kevin Durant. We won before you, and we can win without you. And I don't want to make this a Kevin Durant situation because I, it's not, and I'm not one that subscribes to all of those takes that I keep seeing people say. 
Uh, but they did it. What more can you want? This man, Clay Thompson, cannot lose. He can't miss in the in the figurative sense because bro was just chucking shots up. He said it's game six, Clay. They gonna get these shot attempts. He, he didn't hit him. He didn't hit a lot of them. But for him to be on the IL and injured for two seasons, him to immediately come back and win a championship is amazing. Um, he had only a couple really good games in the series, but either way, his intensity was there. He had a couple possessions in this game and in the last game where his defense was ramped up from the previous games where he was doing the old Iguodala swipe at the ball and getting steals and stuff like that. But let's let's be honest. Steph Curry, as it says, was unanimous pick for the MVP. Shout out to him. Andrew Wiggins was the second best player on the championship team. Wiggs. You know, Wiggs. And I like his interview afterwards. He said, what did you learn about uh, winning once you got here? And one thing he said is that it's an everyday thing. There is no days off. And it, it, I guess it hasn't been. You know, Wiggins has blossomed to more than just a guy that you, you saw and said, hey, he going to get you a 17, 18 points, and that's it. He did all the dirty work you needed him to do this entire series, and he was the second best player on this team. Wiseman, Moody, Kaminga, champions. Chris Chioza, champion. Um, Juan Toscano Anderson had his his, uh, his Mexican flag on him, champion. And you know what? I even went back because, you know, this is the year of the of the health and safety protocol where everybody was getting the call. Hey, Joe Johnson, you can still shoot, right? Come to Boston. And he scored. If they would have won this championship, Joe Johnson would have been enough for a championship ring if you didn't know. And I was looking to see who, who did the Warriors have. They had to be some type of old-timey player. I don't think I saw anybody. And if, the, if they did have somebody, he didn't play a single minute because I just looked at minutes played for this team. Um, and they didn't have anybody. Kundari Weatherspoon, NBA champion, G League and NBA champion. So I, I just, I admire um, a lot of the way the Golden State Warriors have been run. Have they been able to execute? Steve Kerr continues to show why he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. And I know the the um, there's been a lot of, I don't even know what the word I'm thinking about. Just uh, people believe that Steve Kerr is not really coaching. When you have Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green, and Kevin Durant, you just roll the balls out and let them go play basketball. But in a series like this, you saw this man coaching, and you can see that that man is extremely talented and extremely bright when it comes to basketball. It's not saying much. Bro's got a bunch of championships as a player, so obviously he understands the game of basketball on a different level. Kevon Lewis. You know, he went to the bench, gave them six offensive rebounds tonight. Didn't even realize it was that many. Six of his seven offensive rebound, oh, rebounds were offensive. Jordan Poole, uh, again, from G League to NBA champion, six-man of the year candidate, most approved player candidate, he did all of those things, and I'm extremely happy for them. Extremely, extremely happy for them. Um, I, t today for the Boston Celtics, they got no production whatsoever from that bench. And the, the turnovers were the big thing. Today they ended up with, I didn't even realize it was 22. They got, they forced 15 turnovers to the Warriors, but they gave up 22. Ah, that's rough, man. That's rough. Um, I don't know what the offseason looks like for the Boston Celtics, but like I said, a lot of the core things will be back. And I do believe they have an opportunity to make a, to make another run in the near future. Uh, but that's why I'm going to wrap it up, man. Um, let me know in the comment section where you rate this NBA season. And uh, congratulations to the Warriors, man.